Welcome back to my channel once again. This is Frank Nitty here to talk about the Green Bay Packers 27-16 win over the Denver Broncos. This was the Packers' second of three straight home games, and just like this coming Thursday, it's, it was very important to win all those games because how we because of how we got to finish the season. So right away to start the game off, you saw a lot of what you saw last week. The offense came out looking all right and just ran into a brick wall afterwards. The Packers never were able to put together a long drive the whole game, and Denver Broncos dominated the time of possession. Now, it's not it's not as simple as it seems, so we'll go through all that. But the, how we won this game is because of making bigger plays than the Denver Broncos. First score of the game, Rodgers hit Malquez Valdez Scanley downfield on a free play for a for forty yard touchdown catch. Good effort by Scanley, though I still have my issues with him. I'll get into in a minute. The Broncos responded with a nice kickoff return. Their defense were able to to prevent them from turning that to any points when you force them into a quick th three and out on a negative four yards. The Broncos' next position, however, they they played a lot more better. They went on a 15-play, eight-and-a-half-minute drive to tie the game up 77-7. The Broncos' next possession will almost be as long, but we were able to hold them to a field goal to tie the game once again after a short drive by us that ended also in a field goal attempt. The Packers' next couple of drives started in Denver's territory, ter territory off of turn uh, turnovers, First being a Joe Flacco strip fumble, and the next being another strip fumble by Jair Alexander. Uh, the defense did a great job once again. This game with takeaways that really trained, that really decided the factor in this win. They they were able to turn those turn the offense was able to turn those turnovers into points off short yardage. Both of those were two touchdown runs by Aaron Jones. Green Bay's offense, and after, after we went up after that second touchdown, there was no going back. Green Bay's offense, I said, you know. Like I said, they didn't. They still didn't look all that great, and after early success, once again struggled to show any type of consistency. You know, the biggest reason Denver lost this game was because of that. And if you're a Broncos fan, you gotta be heated because this game could have definitely gone differently with how well the Broncos ran the football and dominated time possession. Had they been able to take care of the football, they, some of those drives could have more ended in points. Like I said, we're still we're still struggling to be more consistent on our offense side. Green Bay catches fire to start the game, and the flame goes out very soon. And we look like we don't know what we're doing. We didn't lean on the wrong game enough this week. Aaron Jones only had 10 carries for 19 yards. He scored two touchdowns for people who have him on, his, on his, have him on their fantasy league, but only 10 carries. No, I'm sorry, man. That's just that's just not a, that's just completely unacceptable. I don't know what the hell was going on with Aaron Jones. I don't know if he just had some some bruises or whatever, some injuries that we don't know about. Whatever the case may be, but there's no reason for him to have only had 10 carries. All right. And it's one of the, and it's just it, it's just once again one of the problems I have with the Packers offense is they don't want to lean on the wrong game enough despite the fact that we got a really good guy at our starting running back. I mean don't get me wrong I like Jamal Williams you know he had more but he had more rushing attempts in this game for some reason and and granted he made the best out of those chances but there's no excuse for the lack of Aaron Jones on offense again this week all right there's no excuse for it Aaron Jones should have been used a lot more and we should and he shouldn't have came out this game only 19 yards for 10 carries. That's unacceptable, all right. And like, and, and as I said, one of the problems I have with the Packers offense is that we'll come out, we'll run the ball on first down, and just, and if the run doesn't go for a good yardage, we'll completely abandon it for pretty much the rest of the drive, for as long as the drive goes on anyway, because it usually doesn't go on for that much longer. Aaron Rodgers, on the other hand, had another average game, seventeen of twenty nine for two hundred thirty five yards and one TD. The leading wide receiver was Marquez Valdez Scanley with six or seven for ninety nine yards and a touchdown off ten targets. He got a lot of targets this game, but had that one big drop that led to a three and out. He needs to get better at that. I mean, he had last week he had a big drop on third down, and now here he is again. If he's gonna be our second option, he needs to clean that up. He needs to clean that up, man. Fix the crucial drops. Him and him and Geronimo, I think, also had a drop this game. You know, Devontae Adams, he only had four catches for 56 yards over four targets. So he caught every pass that came his way. But only four targets, that's not going to cut it. Our best wide receiver shouldn't lead the game with only four targets. Just like I said with Aaron Jones, you got you, he's another player, one of our best players on offense that should be getting the ball a lot more. Rodgers and Matt LaFleur need to do both better to get him the football. Other than that, that nothing else was going on in the passing game. So, like I said, a very average game by the offense. They did just they did just enough to win, but still, we are just we are just out there just taking baby steps to becoming a good offense. You know, Aaron in his press conference after the game, he says he wants greatness out of the offense, and it's like, well, you're not going to get that if your if your two best players on offense, Jones and Adams, aren't given more opportunities, and your drives come to a quick halt. 
and, and, and you know, and also the grass comes to a quick halt because right now, the Green Bay Packers lead the lead the league in three and outs. We lead the league in three and outs, and we're one of the worst teams on third downs. Do you? Can, there's no way you can be a good offense if you can't convert on third downs, and sure as hell can't move, can stay, sustain a drive that then and, and keep yourself from going three and outs so damn quickly. Those two, those, 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 those are the two keyest things of why this offense is as bad as it is. And until I see better on the offense, and well, unless somebody proves me wrong, Green Bay right now has one of the worst offenses in the league. It, 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 it's it, all you gotta do is just watch the games, man. Just watch the games, and you see how how this team struggles on third downs, struggles to put together any substantial draft. Sure, you can make the excuse that we play some really tough teams to start the season. I totally understand that. The Bears in Chicago, the the Vikings, and even Denver Broncos, their defense is no slouch. You know, even though they struggle in their and they struggle to get to the quarterback, overall the, the Broncos defense is just aren't, aren't slouch either. So yes, we play some pretty tough defensive teams. All right, but I'm telling you, this offense needs to get it going, man. They need to get it going. Leading the league in three and outs. Uh, uh, being one of the worst on third downs is not going to cut it, and that's not a championship caliber onto a team whatsoever. Just um, you know, just the just the lack of being able to sustain any type of consistency, and until they do that, they're putting a lot of pressures on the defense, who did struggle at times with this football game. So we're going to get to that. The defense, like I said, one of the biggest problems with the defense this game was their struggle once again in the run game. The Broncos ran the ball very effectively against us. Both Lindsey and Freeman averaged around four yards a carry. You know, Mike Patton, I understand, he, you know, he never really adjusted to that. And we got ran all over by those guys and struggled, and they struggle a lot to make tackles. You know, I mean, that one, that touchdown run by the by Lindsey was absolutely ridiculous. We had at least two guys got their arms wrapped around him, and he, and he slipped out of both of them. That needs, to, that, needs to, that needs to be cleaned up, man. So if I'm going to, so if I'm going to criticize the defense at all, it's definitely those two areas. I understand Mike Patton's about stopping a pass attack, and I get that, but you need some good bodies up front to slow down the run. Otherwise, teams are going to look at the film and see they can effectively run the ball, especially of the uh, of the middle. Yeah, and have hash out the linemen. That when teams are going to look at that and see how effectively that can, they can run the ball against us, which is pretty scary when we got a team like the Dallas Cowboys on our schedule. So the defense must get better at tackling and stop and, and run stoppage. Or more teams like Denver this week, Minnesota last week, and even the Cowboys, once we play them, are going to shred us. They're going to run down our throats. And by, and by doing that, putting together long drives, they keep the offense, our, our offense off the field. But the defense, even when, at that, even when all I just said, the defense still outperformed the offense because we were able to make plays when we needed it. The pass rush was very effective. And when you have a quarterback like Joe Flacco, who for the most part had a very, you know, below average game, you know, by Joe Flacco standards, <laughs> he's a sitting duck in the pocket. So you can get you can exploit that and get home on him. The Smiths, the Smiths both did a good job in getting in generating pressure. And in the game, the defense overall in the game was six total sacks on Joe Flacco, one pick, and overall three turn and overall three turnovers. Right now the Packers lead the league in turnovers, I believe, and turn and turnover officiated with six plus. That also helps the fact that our offense has not turned the ball over yet. So that's 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 one bright spot to the offense. The pick that that one pick by Donald Savage was the first of his career, and Rashawn Gary also got some by picking up his first career sack also out of the six. So just just to conclude what I'm saying, this is this is definitely what we wanted out of the Green Bay Packers defense for so long now. Playmakers. Alright? I mean, anybody who's been subscribed to me for a long time, one of the things I used to always uh, bring up and complain about as far as us on the defensive side is the lack of playmakers we had. Guys who can make plays and change the outcome of a football game. It's what we've been missing for a long time, a long time on the, on this defense. The defense actually has an identity. You see some leadership in that locker room. And these guys are out there playing by far better than the offense these first three weeks of the season. All right, the new additions that we brought in on the offseason, uh, both Smiths, the, uh, Darnell Savage, even Amos at the end, at the uh, back there at safety. Jair is playing better, even better than he did last year. These guys are out there making plays, man. And I love it. You still got consistent play by Blake Martinez. <clears throat> Kenny Clark is doing his thing up front. We got playmakers on this defense, man. And, this, and I love it. It's, I love watching those guys play. 
but they have to get better as far as, like I said, as far as run stoppage. And Kevin King needs to be better in coverage. He struck it. If you watch this game, he was definitely struggling. He got beat a few times. In fact, if Joe Flacco had thrown a better ball, and back when they were in the red zone, that one drive, I think, in the third quarter, that could have been a touchdown because he got beat. Like I said, Kevin, Ke Kevin King struggled in coverage. He got beat several times in this football game. So he needs to play better. If I if I was to point out one a big weak link on on the defensive side, it's it's definitely King. He needs to play better in coverage. All right, the guy's got size, but you, but he needs but but as far as footwork and stuff like that, he needs to improve on that. All right. But overall, the, like I said, the new additions of the offseason have all worked out. They all been making plays, and like I said, the defense is out completely outplaying the offense. The offense definitely needs to play better, man. Hopefully that happens this coming Thursday against the Philadelphia Eagles, who have definitely been struggling. <clears throat> definitely been struggling, and they're missing big targets. <laughs> big, big targets and weapons on their offense. So we'll see how that go that game goes this coming Thursday. Hopefully we come out with the win, come out 4-0, and, and finish this three-game this three game stretch at, all at home. <clears throat> and then after that, we'll just see how it goes. But that's all, that's all I got, man. Go Packers. Peace.